How's it going, everyone? It's Sam. BlackRock just did something that they have never done before. They told us they were going to do it. They signaled it to us months ago. But we just found out today that it finally happened. And this is actually, I think, one of the biggest driver of buying in the ETFs moving forward. I think it's going to be absolutely insane to see some of these uh, flows come into the ETFs because of this. And... Honestly, it's all up to BlackRock whether they even want to do it. There's no one that has to buy, uh, that has to actively buy the way that they're doing it now. If you don't mind, hit subscribe. Turn on the bell notification so you can see future videos just like this. We have some other big news that we have to cover, so we're going to try to get through it nice and quick. If you want to trade cryptocurrency, there's a link underneath the video to Margex. There you can... Uh, trade, you can long and short all different kinds of crypto assets using all different forms of collateral from Caspa to Bitcoin to USDC to Solana. And the cool thing is you can trade something like the Bitcoin chart that's easier to read and you can use different forms of collateral so you can gain Caspa tokens by trading Bitcoin, which is cool. So if you want to try that out, you can try it out underneath the video. Now, before we get into what BlackRock's doing, let's just take a look at this. NVIDIA up 7% today. They're at 2.8 trillion. Okay, let's take a look at some of the other large companies right now. 2.8. They are within spitting distance of Apple. Let's see. Are they? Yep. They're close to Microsoft as well. Microsoft's at 3.2 trillion. They're, what, 10% away from the largest company on earth. That's insane. So there are some people <laughs> allocating to NVIDIA today. Nowhere else they're in allocating to Bitcoin and Bitcoin ETFs. We just got today a filing with SEC where BlackRock disclosed it's been adding Bitcoin exposure to their strategic income opportunities portfolio. Now, why is this such a big deal? Why is it such a big deal that the strategic income opportunities portfolio goes out and buys Bitcoin? Well, they are a large, large portfolio. So you might not have ever heard of it, but it is $37.5 in AUM. Okay, that, that's big. Uh, this is a non-traditional bond portfolio. So they're including this with bonds uh, as a way to get return. They have 5,400 holdings. So keep in mind, this is very small so far. They bought $3.56 million. It's a $37 billion portfolio. So while it says that they bought about 0.01, depending on where you look, it says 0.01% of their portfolio is now IBIT. It's actually 0.001%. One ten thousandth of their portfolio is IBIT now. Keep in mind that this portfolio, the Strategic Income Opportunities portfolio, is $37.5 billion, so it's large. But overall, their AUM is about 10 trillion. So this accounts for about 1 270th of their overall um of their overall AUM as BlackRock. So I mean again, you have 1 10,000th of the portfolio in Bitcoin and that portfolio is then worth 1 270th of their overall AUM. So they've just started allocating their own funds into the Bitcoin ETFs. Now I've covered why they would want to do this. But in short, you can get a much better return. You only have to put in a small percentage of your portfolio and it would help out the fund's performance greatly. And if you do that, even if you have low fees in this IBIT portfolio, keep in mind, if this grows the other portfolio, the Strategic Income Opportunities portfolio, this has a higher fee. This actually has three quarters of a percent in fees each year. So if you have something like this that outperforms, that actually gives like significant returns, they can charge a higher fee on the overall portfolio as well, or they can charge the same fee, but there are more funds in it. So it's like double dipping. They can make more money from fees this way. So they just started to do this. They've said that they're going to do it. There's uh, this portfolio, and then there's another portfolio that they um, had told the SEC that they would possibly uh, include Bitcoin in. And this is just the beginning. As I said, the cool thing is they're the ones that pick 
when they buy these shares too. So it's not like they have to go solicit or they have to have someone just happen to type in IBIT and buy the BlackRock ETF. No, they can go and say, hey, we're going to allocate a billion dollars into Bitcoin. Okay, that is something that they can do now. I think they're going to start slow, but keep in mind, they could continue to do this for hundreds of years at this rate. So I think that this is actually really big news that's finally starting to happen. And you can find the SEC document as well where it's stipulated or where it shows that they bought this asset as well. And they're not the only ones buying. Banks want to hold Bitcoin, but most can't yet. We just heard some rules about regulation in the U.S. last week, um, possibly some changes there. But Norges Bank is buying MicroStrategy. They bought 112,393 shares. Now, that is a lot. So that is actually 0.7% of MicroStrategy. And that is $169 million worth of MicroStrategy. Now, who is this Norges Bank? It's the Central Bank of Norway. They're responsible for managing the Government Pension Fund of Norway, which is the world's largest sovereign wealth fund, as well as the bank's own foreign exchange reserves. Okay, so again, it's quasi, uh, it's a quasi government bank. So yeah, they're buying Bitcoin. We have the president of the US or former president of the US accepting Bitcoin, uh, talking about how he's going to protect your Bitcoin rights. We have the current sitting president of the U.S. now talking about Bitcoin, talking about how he's being crushed because of donations, because of it. The SEC is changing on crypto. We have other nations and uh, other entities buying Bitcoin. We have pensions buying Bitcoin. We have now companies, too, that are copying MicroStrategy. You know, we've talked about MetaPlanet a lot, and just this morning, since my last video, they authorized the purchase of an additional 250 won, $250 million won of Bitcoin. Now, let's do this in USD. That is $1.5 million, $1.6 million worth of Bitcoin. Okay, that's a lot of Bitcoin, as I said. So, yeah, it, it's looking bullish. We have another company that is buying Bitcoin going up a lot because of it. But before we get into that, I do want to talk about DYOR. So I am investing in some uh, in some tokens that are outside of Bitcoin as well. And this is an interesting one that's coming up soon. The on-chain command center, DYOR Labs. I'll leave links to this. Well, you can, you can also look it up. But they talk about how a lot of existing platforms have stopped innovating. Dex tools, CoinMarketCap, Uniswap. Uh, they don't have customer support. They're not easy to look at. They're poorly laid out. And they start overcharging. They're doing a lot of advertisements. Okay. So how do we fix it? Empower devs to manage a project from one place. All in one team dashboard, marketing resources, liquidity locker. Provide traders with more powerful tools, DEX limit orders, automatic automatic slippage, faster transactions. So meet DYOR DEX, one-stop shop for managing token projects, powerful capabilities in a streamlined UX, transparent pricing, proprietary software, uh, responsive customer service, etc. So they will be talking more about this on their Twitter. As I said, do some more research. Just wanted to bring this up to your attention or bring this to your attention because I do think it's a project that you probably want to pay attention to, especially with more people coming into crypto. Obviously, the the cheapest, easiest to use options going to be what wins in the end. So definitely check them out. As I covered in today's video, Semler Scientific announces the Bitcoin Treasury strategy. Now, I bring this up again because they are up 38%. They're spiking. They're spiking on this news and for good reason. Like I covered it in the video this morning. I, I took a look at their balance sheet, took a look at their company's profits and their revenue. And it's actually a pretty impressive company. Quick growth. They have a lot of cash. Good balance sheet. Now they're starting to invest in Bitcoin. They're moving up 37% here today. This is the Bitcoin effect. right? This is the Bitcoin effect. Great news for Semler Scientific. And it makes it easier to go and issue debt. I don't believe they actually talked about issuing debt in here. Let's see. Yeah, They didn't talk about that at all but they just took a lot of their money 
uh, and put it into Bitcoin, the majority of their balance sheet. They had 57 million in cash. They put 40 million into Bitcoin. Okay. Now, where do we look like we're going? Uh, what, you know, what is the fair value of Bitcoin? What's overvalued level? It's coming from the Rational Root. Great Twitter account. Uh, I, I follow a lot of the charts there, really interesting charts. The on-chain value map, they say now heavily overvalued is at 130K and rising, fair value at 53. So some people might have some something to say about that. Some people might take that as bearish, but keep in mind this raises over time too. So, and depending on the chart you're looking at, some people would say no, uh, fair value is at 70K, 75K, uh, all different values. So just wanted to show that to show, hey, even if we get into the 70s, 80s, 90s, heavily overvalued is still far away, okay? All right, so that is what we had to cover here today. Some interesting news coming from BlackRock. Uh, really cool to see a Bitcoin, a now Bitcoin company spiking up in price. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you so much for watching. Definitely check out the links underneath the video. If you do want to start trading crypto, you can trade over on Marjax. I'll see you in the next.